Let's do it. Welcome back to the show, JD Aliens. It's always good to be in your company. And to you new guy, girl, welcome to JDL TV. I'm your host, Antoine. Just take my word for it, Richardson. And today we're going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So I've had this phone, I'm guessing it's been about a month. This thing is a beast. I, I had some issues with it when I first got it because it was a new phone and you know I had to get through that learning curve. I quickly released a video talking about all the stuff I didn't like about it. Then I did a review after like a week or so. And since it's been well over a month now, we're past the honeymoon phase. We've had a good time getting to know each other and I definitely have a lot more good things to say about it than bad. So let's just talk about it. In my old age, it seems like my vision is getting a little questionable. So today I'll be using my Galaxy Tab 7 Plus, S7 Plus, Tab S7 Plus, uh, to do my notes that I've actually taken on my phone because I've only had this tablet uh, right around a week, I guess you would say. And it's been a great tablet. And yes, I will be doing a full review on this thing. Uh, maybe this week, maybe next week. I don't know. But today it's all about the Galaxy Note. I'm just using this for my notes pun intended. So I'm not going to harp on all the stuff that people always talk about, like the screen. Come on, man. It's a Samsung screen. It's gigantic. It's beautiful and it's quick and responsive. Yes, it's 120 Hertz, but you got to give up full resolution. Whatever, man. It still looks good. It still runs fine. Let me tell you all something, man. This is the non-technical tech channel. I'm not going to drive home a bunch of stuff that really normal people don't care about. It's only you hardcore tech people that care about these, these, these fine numbers and, and fine tooth comb stuff. We're here to talk about the real world experience from an actual user. Once again, like I said in my original video, I don't run through phones every week or every two weeks or even every month. When I get a phone in my hands, I'm using that sucker like for real, for real, for a minimum of a year. Most likely it's gonna be two years. So this is my phone. So when it comes to real world experience with this screen, I have mine set at 120 hertz and I don't mind that it does not have full resolution. I did not even notice. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, the battery life. Reviewers have trashed the battery life on this phone and I've even had some negative points about it. When actuality, it's actually a decent battery life. It's very comparable to my Note 10 Plus that I was using prior to this. Uh, you do have to top it off, you know, somewhere in the day, but it has like mega fast charging. So you can either plug it in and get that super duper fast charging that it's capable of doing, or you can sit it on a wireless charger for a few minutes, you know, maybe get about 10, 15 more percent, and then you're good for the rest of the day. I pretty much unplug mine at about 6.30, maybe seven o'clock in the morning where I take it off the wireless charger anyways and I might charge for a few minutes in the middle of the day and then I'm putting it back on the charger somewhere around mm, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So with this phone, man, if you can just charge for maybe 10 minutes during the day, it's fast wireless charging and ultra fast plugged in charging. If you can sit and charge this thing for maybe 10 minutes during the day, you're gonna be fine. Don't be listening to all this battery life is trash stuff because it's really not bad. I mean, come on, man, it's a mobile device. And here's the thing about that. If you're one of those people who sit there on Twitter all day long, like literally all day long, how do you even get any work done, man? If you sit on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook all day, First of all, fix your life. There's other stuff to do. <laughs> but second of all, man, take a break. Plug your phone in. Step away for a second. Detox from social media and the phone's going to last you an entire day. But I will tell you, this thing does tend to get a little bit warm in the outdoors, man. Uh, now it's a little bit cool outside, so I'm not worried about it. But in the summertime, it does not take this thing that much to heat up and like noticeably heat up in the in the outdoors. But let's move around a little bit and talk about some of the software, such as Link to Windows. That's one of the killer features about this phone. I don't know if any other phone uh, outside of Samsung is going to have this, but it is clutch. Uh, you literally link it to Windows over the air, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I don't know how they do it, but it's just some kind of Samsung wizardry where you can literally drag and drop pictures from your phone to your PC and, you know, do whatever you're going to do with them. 
you can cut and paste. Now you can open up Android apps on top of Windows and work with them inside of your computer on your on your screen. Man, that, that, that is nice. Like I have really enjoyed that. That way my phone can just be chilling right there and I'm doing everything that I would on my PC as I'm working without having to like, you know, divert my attention from one place to another, going back and forth between my phone and PC. So a link to Windows is definitely a highly valued feature for, for me anyways. Now among the software features, you do have wireless DeX. I was never a huge DeX user in the first place, but wireless DeX makes it even better. No, I still don't use it, but I did test it out on my bedroom TV and it was nice. Wireless DeX actually works very, very well. So if that's something that you can actually implement in your lifestyle, I say it's going to be a great tool for you because it works extremely well. It's like having a wireless monitor that can be like 20 feet away from you. All you have to do is have a keyboard and mouse handy. And if you want to, you can actually use your phone as the mouse. But Samsung also gives you the option to use your phone as normal as your wireless DeX is transmitting to your, uh, your big screen. Now I want to talk about this bad boy right here, the S Pen. It is now on the left. I know a lot of right-handed people are upset and they're riding in the streets right now. But us left-handers, I am rejoicing every time I get to use this thing. So you just pull it out, man, and start writing. But moving it to the left-hand side, that's not the big feature of the S Pen. Now you can actually go into your notes and screen on top of text. You also have uh, where you can share it as a PDF file or convert PDF files into your Samsung notes and manipulate them there. And that kind of takes the place of that, what was it, uh, write on PDF app. This is still in existence, the write, in P, uh, write on PDF, but Samsung notes takes everything a step further. So the PDF integration and the write over text integration, that, that's been a huge feature for me because I use it all the time. And another one of my favorite features about the new Samsung notes is that they have folders now. Now you can actually organize that stuff because previously it was just like one long list of notes that you got, but now you can keep yourself organized. Okay, so the fingerprint scanner and the facial recognition are better. Facial recognition, it's just a little bit better, but the fingerprint scanner, man, leaps and bounds better. Much faster, much more reliable, much more accurate. So you don't spend a whole bunch of time kind of just searching around to get this thing unlocked. Uh, combine that with the facial recognition, your phone's gonna be unlocked super quick so you can get into what you're doing. But once you got your phone open, what you gonna be doing on your phone, man? Most of us are just scrolling up and down through Instagram, right? We're just scrolling. Yeah, well, let's double tap that bad boy right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, most of us are scrolling up and down the feet, you know, checking stuff out, you know, whatever you follow on Instagram or whatever. But then there's some of us that like to game. So um Samsung has been really pushing Xbox or X Cloud or what is it, Game Pass, that's what it is. They've been really pushing that down our throats. They even give you, uh, what is it, like a free three months of Game Pass or something like that when you get this thing. But I'm a Google Stadia user and I'm here to let you know right now it works well with Google Stadia. And I'm pretty sure that 120 hertz screen is playing a big factor in that because it, all the games have looked really gorgeous with me playing on there. This controller is one of my favorite accessories to use with it. This is the GLAP controller. I've actually showcased this before on the channel with this phone. You just open this bad boy up, slide it in there just like that, release that switch, turn on Bluetooth and it's ready to go. And it's a great gaming experience. Uh, the screen is beautiful, like I said, everything is, is quick and, oh man, throw some Galaxy Buds or some, some Crusher Evos. Get them Crusher Evos, man, and play some games like Avengers or something like that. You're gonna have a good time gaming with this phone. So it is a gaming beast, but once again, it will heat up even when you're playing Stadium. And I, I just don't know why this thing gets so warm. Everybody else has said, my phone doesn't heat up. Maybe you're not pushing your phone enough, man. <laughs> because I am what they call a power user. I use this thing for business reasons and I use it for a lot of personal reasons, of course, but when you game on it, it will heat up a little bit. And then when you go outside and try to game, because that's where I do a lot of my gaming is outside on my patio. Matter of fact, let's go out there right now. Oh yeah, that man is handsome. Look at that right there. All right, so the camera, is amazing okay it better be it being this size the selfie camera is really good as well so with the selfie camera i had absolutely no problems i really enjoyed the shots that come out of it but i'm a youtuber so there's a lot of things in the selfie camera that i would want and they're not there and there's a lot of things in the um 
and the main camera, which are there for someone who is like a, you know, kind of a semi-pro phone videographer or photographer might want to have. But one thing I do like in general is that they have the option to have 1080p, 24 frames a second. That might not matter to a lot of people, but it matters to somebody like me because the video you're watching right now is shot in 1080p, 24. Why 24? Because it's more smooth and cinematic and more lifelike. That 60p at high refresh rate and stuff like that, sometimes it just looks a little bit too computer generated for me, or I don't know, sports are shot that way. Fast moving things are supposed to be shot that way. But for me, 1080p 24 was super important. But the only way you can get it is in uh, pro mode which is fine because if you're going to be shooting like that you probably are some kind of or some kind of semi pro or pro at it but why can't we have that in selfie mode i wish we could have a pro mode in selfie mode because a lot of people let me think about this we just talked about instagram a lot of people are doing some some hardcore stuff in vertical video which it's stupid <laughs> but they're doing a lot of a lot of stuff right so give us more options in the selfie camera so move some of these uh big features that are in the uh the rear shooter move them to the front shooter that way we can have a nice balance of both but you know at the end of the day it's a galaxy note so what's really not to love if you're a note fan then you're a fan of the note 20. but there are a few more improvements that i would like to see and i got them jotted down right here on my notes all right so let's just go down the list here uh actual memory and more options for memory you know this isn't just a note specific thing but it Man, it infuriates me how you purchase a 128 gigabyte phone and 21 out of 128 gigabyte is used up by the software. When you buy a 128 phone, you should get 128. They should reserve that software for another memory somewhere or yeah, another memory. Give us the full 128 because when you buy the 128, you're actually now getting 101 or something like that. Either way, I wish that like all phones would do that. Once you buy a memory phone, like you, you buy that memory uh, version, you should get that memory. Don't take up 20 or 30 gig of it with the software you put on it. So that's a, that's a huge gripe of mine, but it's not note specific. Now, real time note sharing. So Samsung Notes has it to where you can actually share notes with friends, family members or colleagues or something like that. But it, it's not like it do, it's not a two way deal. It, the person who started the note can edit the note and share it. And the other people on the other end can look at it, but they can't edit it. And then, you know, it worked both ways. Google Keep has it that way. If you're sharing notes with family members like a shopping list or something like that, it's actually done in real time. You can actually see someone editing the other note in real time. So I wish Samsung Notes would integrate something like that. Now, deeper integration at with Windows at launch. I did tell you how much I enjoyed the link to Windows, but a lot of the features were not available at launch. And also on the Note 10 Plus, a lot of the features were not available at launch. And as a matter of fact, there are still some features that they talked about at the Samsung keynote that are not available as far as compatibility with Windows. So when you advertise that stuff, man, have it ready at launch, or I keep saying launch, have it ready at launch so we can all use it as you saw on the keynote, because that's why we bought the phone, right? We don't wanna wait six to nine months before you actually give us what we paid for uh, based off your advertisement. Why can't we have a, a, a frosted back? So the gloss on the back of the phones, like, come on, man, we're kind of over that, right? Nobody wants a plastic phone anymore and metal doesn't work well with, um, with the wireless charging and stuff. So if we gotta have glass, let's do the frosted back, man. I, it can't be that hard, right, Samsung? And since we're talking about the design, this is a massive phone and I love the hardware, man. It is just gorgeous all around. But because it's an all glass phone and it's got these metal rails, can we just kind of etch the side too to make it a little bit more grippy on the side? Just kind of have a little etch right here on the sides of that bad boy. That way it just kind of doesn't slide down your hand like that. The reason why mine doesn't slide anymore is because I have a skin on it from Sophie Guard and I have the, uh, the like the, the screen protector on here. It's not a glass. I don't do glass screen protectors. I use the, um, the TPU one. So that helped it from sliding down my, my fingers like this. But for the person that doesn't use a back screen protector who actually enjoys that mystic bronze or that white or that black it came with, it's gonna slide down your fingertips. So let's etch 
some, you know, let's etch a little bit on the side rails. That way it doesn't slide down your fingers. Now, these are nitpicky things, but they actually matter to me. So I figured I'd share them with you and maybe you'll realize they actually would matter to you as well. But I'm gonna keep going with my complaints because it really does irritate me that Samsung comes out with an S series like six months later, right? And it's pretty much the Galaxy Note without the S Pen. I wish that they would reserve more technology and more of the software features for the Galaxy Note to make it stand far apart from the S lineup. I get it, the S is a premium phone, the Note is a premium phone, but there, st there should be real distinctions between the two outside of the S Pen, like the, um, like the side window that I don't personally, I don't think that should be the um, like a, a feature that's that's ported over to other phones that are not the note, the multi the multitasking and stuff like that, or the swipe from the edge to get your apps to come out like the, the edge panels. Maybe that should be a note thing by itself, because if you think about it, that feature is very useful with the S Pen. So just reserve more things, more awesome things for the note lineup and spread it away, like get it away from the S lineup because people really do have a, a hard time figuring out which one to buy. Do I get the S or do I get the Note? Because they're almost the same phone until you just kind of go through a, a couple of tweaks and realize you're just getting an S Pen and possibly a better camera. Now these next two complaints are things that I've wanted on my phone since I figured out they could be put on a phone. Bring back the IR Blaster, Samsung. Bring back the IR Blaster. I miss that thing. And you know what I miss even more than an IR blaster? Samsung has never done this before, but HT had it and it was clutch. It was a kickstand on the back of the phone. These phones are like twice the size of the HT, uh, HTC phone that had a kickstand on the back of it. Why don't we have kickstands on the back of these phones? They give us Hulu, they give us YouTube, they give us Amazon on here. We got Netflix but we can't just prop the phone up by itself and kick out the stand and, and watch some, some movies or some content or something. Give us a kickstand, man. Everybody is doing like voice chats and, and all that good stuff with the phone in vertical mode. So why can't that kickstand come out and just prop it up vertically instead of having to buy some hideous case with a huge back on it that has a kickstand attached to it? I don't know. That matters to me. It might not matter to you, but I wish the phone still had kickstands and IR blasters. And my biggest gripe about this phone and any other phone Samsung comes out with, and as well as their tablet and watch. When you launch the product, have it available inside of 72 hours. I get it. Influencers. I'm not a big enough influencer, okay? I don't get the phone, you know, two, three weeks in advance so I can, you know, make reviews of it and stuff like that. The, the rest of us regular people don't have that opportunity, but when we see it on your keynote or we see commercials for it or whatever, we see it, we want it. We want to pull out our wallet and throw it at the computer screen. We don't want to have to watch, you know, MKBHD or, or Flossie Carter, or your average consumer and I Justine. We don't want to have to just watch those people for another three weeks to a month before we can actually get our hands on the phone. Make that bad boy available at launch. That way the rest of us consumers can actually purchase the phone when you launch it. Now don't let my gripes and wish lists uh, confuse you. I really do love this phone. It's a fantastic phone and I think it is worth the money, no matter what price you get it at. There's a lot of good deals out there that are still going right now. So snatch one of them deals up because it's definitely worth the price of admission. Before I get out of here, I want to talk about a few accessories that I have enjoyed along with the phone itself. So first, we've already talked about the GLAP uh, mobile controller. This thing is clutch. Done several videos with this on it. Definitely check them out. Then we're going to talk about the Galaxy Buds Plus. Yes, these things are still very relevant. If you want to work out or just do a whole bunch of stuff and you don't mind the passive isolation that you're going to get, or actually you want the passive isolation you get, uh, the Galaxy Buds Plus is still a major device to go companion with your, uh, your Galaxy Note 20. And then of course, the Galaxy Buds Live. If you have seen my video about the Galaxy Buds Live, these are actually my favorite, still using these today. As a matter of fact, since the Galaxy Buds Live have come into my house, these have been stuck in the drawer. I just still think they're relevant to this day. But when it's time for some over ear killer bass, I've been enjoying the hell out of these Skullcandy Crusher Evos, especially when it comes to watching movies and playing games. 
So if you're a gamer or if you like watching movies and stuff, you definitely want to try out these skull crushers right here. I call them noggin thumpers, uh, whatever you want to nickname them. They are great headphones to purchase. Last but not least, we want to talk about this bad boy right here. This is the Osmo Mobile 3. They also have an Osmo Mobile 4. So if you're into doing a lot of video and stuff, you can have it in either mode or you can do, or you can have it in landscape or portrait mode and you can do all your Instagramming and filming stuff because it does, you know, you can do it, you know, face yourself and stuff like that. But this thing has been nice. So if you want to see more about the camera, in my opinion about the camera, this is not an actual review about the camera, but I do have a video that I shot entirely with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And for B-roll, I use the, um, the Osmo Mobile, I'm sorry, the Osmo Action Camera. So there's a link to that video in the description and in the comment section, I pinned it. I shot that video entirely with this phone at 1080p, 24 frames a second. I gotta get out of here, man. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video that you're watching right now. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out and uh, we're gonna see each other again. But until I get back, y'all make sure y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you. Oh, so you one of them cats that like to just run up in a place, take what you want, then leave, huh? Man, you better hit that subscribe and notification button. That way you know when I'm over here opening up new stuff. And while you're down there, you might want to consider tapping that uh, join button and becoming a member because membership has its perks. See, that wasn't so bad. All right, man, I appreciate you. And I'll see you at the next one. Is that why you are here?